Hello and welcome. This is Mrs. Rowe again and welcome to video number four, day three of our observations with our egg osmosis lab. This is part of our biology from home series and today we are going to look at the our observations and find the mass of our eggs soaking in water overnight. So just a quick recap so far what we've done is we've soaked our egg in vinegar to remove the shell then we use that as a model for an animal cell and we first soaked it in syrup. Yesterday we started to introduce some of the terms that we'll be learning in this coming week. We identified the syrup um, sh lots of sugar makes kids hyper. That's not where it comes from. It's just my little way to help you remember that sugar, salt, things that have a high concentration of solute, um, a low concentration of solvent or water, are known as hypertonic. So we found that when we soaked it in a hypertonic solution, our egg lost mass. In fact, when we look at our mass for the last, from starting to day two, we lost 20 grams of mass, most likely due to water. Then we decided to put our egg in water and see what happens from there. Now an interesting note here, my water has a little bit of a yellowish color at the bottom. I don't know if you can see that and based on density I know that sugar is more dense than water. The top part's clear, the bottom is yellow. So we also noticed yesterday that our egg was a little bit darker that some of the sugar had in fact diffused in. So even though we lost overall mass showing how much water left the egg, some sugar was able to diffuse in. And now that we've been soaking it in water, some of that sugar did diffuse back out again. So what does that tell us? As things are crossing that cell membrane, are, is our water and sugar able to go in both directions? Can the process be reversed? So what we're going to do now is going to take a look at our egg. Yesterday our egg was all wrinkled, kind of looked like an old egg. It was wrinkled and did not, it's squishy. And today you can see, oh, there's some of that shell I wasn't able to get off. Oh, I can actually see a little bit of that um, yolk in there moving around as I'm twirling it. It's back to feeling like a bouncy ball, just like on day one. So this is where it feels really cool feels like something I could play with. Don't, <laughs> not yet. It will break, but we're going to see if we can find the masses. And I keep forgetting to adjust this. I'm gonna bring this up here a little bit. Let's find our mass for today. It's hopefully this guy's not gonna roll. Yep, he's gonna roll. So I'm gonna do this and zero it out. The downside of having this nice expanded egg is that he's very rolly so we're we've actually gained quite a bit of mass it we're now reading at 87.2 so hope you have your notebooks out on day one start was 78.8 so we've actually gained mass from after day one 87.2 grams so that is more than a 20 gram increase after soaking it in water that's even with the sugar that diffused out that's a pretty big change in mass right there. So soaking it in a, so what's the term we want to use? The term we want to use is that it is hypotonic. Think of hippos, hypo, hippos, hungry, hungry hippos. They like to live in water, lots of water. Hypotonic solutions have lots of water in them. So the more water you have, the more hypotonic it is. If it, and we're going to talk about next week. These terms are really adjectives. Adjectives to describe the concentration difference or gradient on two sides of a membrane. If one side has more solute, less solvent, we say that side is hypertonic. If one side has more water, less solute, the solute being the salt, the sugar, whatever's dissolved in our solution, that side is said to be hypotonic, more water, more H2O, hypo, hypotonic, more salt or sugar, sugar makes kids hyper, hypertonic. So you're just describing. So if the water was hypotonic to the egg that I soaked it in, that means the cytoplasm inside the egg was hypertonic compared to the water. Are you starting to see how we use them just to describe the two sides? They're simply adjectives. Um, when the egg was in syrup, oh, and I have a little treat for you guys, something I did not show you, so I'm going to put that egg down here. My first trial, I tried chocolate syrup. 
Now, when I put it in the chocolate syrup, it was really, really thick. I couldn't even get the egg to sink, so I added a little bit of water, and maybe I added too much water, uh, but a really interesting thing happened. I've never used chocolate syrup before. Look at the difference in color. Look how much of that chocolate diffused into the egg. I have never gotten an egg when I've done this lab to come out so dark before, but what's really interesting is it's soaked, but it does not feel squishy. It is not wrinkly. Um, and I have the mass from that one that day was 87.9. So this is just a little side experiment. And oh, let's make sure this is at zero. So it's not, it has lost a little bit. It's gone down to 75.8. So this is a side one. You guys do not need to mark this. This is kind of me having a little bit of fun and seeing what was chocolate syrup going to do. So it did lose about 12 grams, and you can see it's not as rolly. It does sit a little bit better, but it really did not lose a lot. So what does that tell me in terms of this movement? I would hypothesize that my chocolate syrup was still hypertonic to the egg because it still lost some water but it also diffused a lot of sugar in, and obviously the sugar is going to have some mass, but maybe the difference in concentration wasn't as great, so it didn't pull quite as much out this time. So I thought that was an interesting little side thing. So you have that choice. You could re-shrink your egg down and put it into another solution and try then my thought was, and I almost did it yesterday, was to put like food coloring in the water after I shrink it down again, put it in syrup again, shrink it down, and then the next day put it in water with some food coloring and see if you can change the color of your egg and get some of that color to diffuse in. I don't know if it would work. It's part of the fun of just playing around and experimenting and seeing if you could make multicolored eggs. It was just kind of a spur of the moment after I saw how dark this egg became. What else could we do? What other kind of fun experiments could we try? Um, obviously, at some point, these eggs, you got to be careful with them. They, were, they will get stinky. And then the final thing, if you really want to have a little fun, please do this in the sink. Please keep it under control. Yes, everybody, you could see how that bounced. Let me do that again. I don't know if you guys caught that. So it does have a bounce to it. It is sort of like a bouncy ball. And I'll do it in a contained space. So it's kind of cool that it bounces a little bit. Um, Yes, people always say, can I pop, pop it? That's the number one thing people want to do in class. So this would be the time to take a sharp pencil or something and poke it, but make sure. I suggest in the jar, it will keep it contained because it does, it is under pressure and it will kind of explode out and make a bit of a mess. But if you want to pop it and then throw the membrane away in the trash, please make sure you wash your hands when you are finished. And officially, this is it. You are done. As long as you have the final mass for today, 87.2 grams. That is the end of our egg lab. Please send and post any pictures if you decide to go any further and do any other experiments, and I hope you enjoyed our lab. Till next week when we start to look at active transport. Let's talk to you later.